Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Hashtag Leadership, What's On Your Mind. Make sure if you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe on the YouTube channel or follow us on your podcast provider. We have had a couple of months off and we've been working hard behind the scenes to level up everything we do. And this is our first episode back and what a great episode to have. So remember, our aim is to level up your leadership and give you a chance to stop and think about your leadership journey by bringing amazing guests with amazing stories and experts in their field. So today we are speaking to Scotty Simon. How are you doing, sir? Um, and jet like hell, but uh, <laughs> that's on that one, that's, thank you very much. That will become very apparent why in a second. <laughs> so um, Scotty and me were similar backgrounds um, in the Royal Air Force. Our, cra- our, our paths only crossed a couple of times, um, but it's an amazing pleasure to have you on. So thank you for your time. Um, Let's get on with it. So as I hit the 20-minute timer, um, Scotty, just introduce yourself and then let us know who you are, what you do, and also where you are. Yeah, thanks very much, Stu. And it's it's a pleasure to be on, actually, and and see you again. So um, I'm head coach of the Great Britain Olympic and Paralympic Sprint Canoe programmes. Just finished the Olympic Games, home for about five days, and then back out to Japan. So I'm currently at the prep camp uh, ahead of the Paralympic Games. Excellent. So lots going on and lots going on. And obviously, as this episode goes out, um, it is the 1st of September. So we'll, you'll be in the thick of it. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the, um, the crossover from the military and the Olympics as well. I can't wait to hear more about it. So before we forget, let's do the first two questions that we ask everybody. So we'll all see hashtag leadership, what's on your mind? Um, what comes to your mind when you hear the word leadership, the term, the umbrella term, what comes to mind? Um, I guess current it, it's ch- it changes and it'll always change, I suppose, based upon um, the, the context and situation I find myself in. But I guess the bit that really jumps to mind hot on the heels post the Olympic Games is empathy to go along, along with awareness. And that's the situation awareness of what's going on and, and what that means. So they're, they're probably the things that that are hot on my mind at the moment. Um, and I think why that is more relevant, particularly through the Olympic Games, everybody talks about success and there's a whole emphasis on managing victory behind the scenes, but nobody talks about managing defeat and what that might mean. And nobody ever talks about when you have to do that at the same time. So you've got an athlete who's just achieved something unbelievably special and then somebody who hasn't. And then how, how you would manage that the team and the environment all around it. So I think that's why empathy is um, is pretty hot on my mind at the moment. Awesome. And again, it'll be great to hear. Um, we'll expand on that in a second as well, because it, it'll be um, a great conversation and very much relevant to linking into the corporate world as well. Um, so your journey, staying with you specifically, whether, whether it was on reflection or whether it was a light bulb moment at the time, where do you think your leadership journey started? Yeah, well, like you like say, Stu, we, we had similar backgrounds, really. I think um, looking back, the, the military were, were, were great, particularly in our roles, at giving us some skills to get up and going, but very transactional. And as you know, out in the real world, that will only get you so far. Um so I think there was a bit there through the middle of my military career where I really started to probably understand transformational leadership um, and really get to grips with the utilisation of that in, in multiple domains and multiple people to achieve multiple objectives in very consequential areas. And in the latter element of my uh, military career, I think that that's where I really understood transformational leadership and how, particularly within some of the training roles I had, um, taking people into those um, consequential areas, but not being able to lead from the front and having to move to the side or the back to empower the people to go and um, literally take the steps for themselves. And of course, you can't do that if, if you're leading all the time. So I think that's where I really understood it. Um, I was lucky that, again, within my role, uh, if, if for if quite a few occasions I went and worked with some special forces, um, so, so I'm not claiming to be anything I'm not here, I was there as part of a training team, but it really gave me a, a great insight into how 
those guys would use a transformational model. They wouldn't label it as that. Um, and then when I came away from that, how I could then utilize those skills in, in, in pretty much the, the role I'm in now. Um, also did some work on a PhD around some other bits and pieces, but what that then taught me, and particularly looking back at the other guys, was how, how as a leader, I, I want to be the, the dullest person in the room and, and absolutely have people who are, who are blow me away with their expertise. But of course, I, I need to like lean on the shoulders of those giants. So I can't do that if, if I'm in, in the limelight. It's, it's allowing those people at the right time to just emerge and, and know that they can step forward. So it's creating psychological safety and having that transformational model where those, those leaders can kind of go, oh, this, this is my bag now. I've got this boss and um, just, you know, pick up, pick up the baton and kind of run with it for you and then you just support. So I guess that, that's been the, the practical uh, application and um, experimentation and innovation of, of my, my philosophy, I suppose. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm a little bit aware of your personal story as well from sort of like the military and then how you came out and then how you've got the role now. Can you just share a little bit about your personal story about how you've got to where you are now? Yeah, so um, I had quite a successful career, really, within our branch. Um, I was doing quite well, and then I, I had a, an accident. I basically, for, for want of a better expression, fell off the side of a mountain. I have no recollection of that whatsoever. Um, so I got some head and neck injuries, which were pretty easy, but the bit that, that really set me back was I got quite a serious head injury, and that took me quite a while to get over. And, um, of course, uh, that those wounds are invisible and particularly around about that time the, the the chat on mental health or head injuries just just wasn't there and I had quite a tough two years to the to the back end of my um my service really and, and kind of left but when I did leave the Invictus pathway picked me up and um that that was just amazing in, in my kind of recovery really and, and getting me back on the road and through there and through some other opportunities that merged then I just ended up working for Sports Scotland for a bit and then got into high performance sport through that and then kind of moved down the road to, to British canoeing. So um, that, that, that's the short, short story of it. But I think what, what was really fundamental in my recovery was, and possibly my transition from a military to a civilian context, was just like really letting go and just kind of going, right, this is who I am now. This is what it means. And just almost like embracing not who you want to be or who you think you should be, but actually who you are. Mm. And I think that that's then really important to kind of go, yeah, do you know what? I do have these injuries now, so I've still got them. Um, I've got strategies and solutions and all the rest of it now. But I think just, just letting go with all of that pretense really helps you be authentic and genuine and then you just seem to kind of, well, for me anyway, I just seem to kick on from there, really. Yeah. Amazing, because I, I, I've heard you speak about it before, and, and it's a very inspirational knowing kind of like a little bit about where you've come from and what you're going through. Um, and and I'm just thinking then, as you were saying that, how, how true is that about sort of like offering that as advice to people in the corporate rat race? In the, you hear it talk like that, you, about how you've lost identity, you go along with... Sort of, especially in leadership, like a certain how you think you should be acting, or or certain environments and corporate world. Um, don't know what your thoughts of that are. Yeah, I, I got asked the other day to I'll be an ambassador for for Help for Heroes, actually, with with people who were who were making that transition, and I, I kind of reflected on some of the people who are successful at it and some of the people who aren't, and the people who aren't almost like hang on to. Um, a past version of self or a version of self that's created almost by, by the culture. So in this regiment, I must be like this. And then they try and move that into a different world where it doesn't fit, doesn't exist, um, and just kind of holds them back, really. And it's not until kind of like you lose all of that and kind of go, oh, I might have believed that at 19 when I was young and dumb and, you know, did all the other stuff. But come on, that, that's not me now. Yeah. And I think that's that's the the important bit as well. And yeah, you go, you do go on all of these corporate things, and it's like you must be this. You know, so as a, as a head coach now, I must be like this, or I must be like that. And it's just like, do I do I really conform? Is that is that really me? 
Yeah. And, and I think people respond to um, authenticity and um, you just get seen through, right? You, we've yeah. all been there with those leaders who are not genuine, who are not authentic and you're like, whatever. So, I, I, yeah, I think that's that's the bit. Yeah, amazing. So I, I'm really keen to sort of, obviously our audience are wanting to level up their leadership, um, your expertise, your experiences. Um, and, and let's keep with the Olympics. Um, and they, obviously you're, you're operating now with high performers um, in a high performance environment. A lot of people, leaders, organizations, businesses want to create high performing teams, high performing environments. Could you just give us your thoughts on how that's done really well? I know every situation, every business, every team is unique. Um, but are there any sort of things that are obviously being from the military high performance backgrounds? What are the commonalities um, of, of what you've been exposed to? Yeah, so I, I guess I've, I've gone through, UK Sport put me through a lot, a lot of leadership courses and um, I, th I think the bit that, that comes back to, to me is, is just the, the similarities with some of the transformational models and they may call it different things. You know, we would have called it Mission Command back in the day, but it, it's kind of that really that's, that really for me, I've, I've really understood and got to grips with at a practical level. And I think the bit now, certainly how I like to do it right now is creating a very flat hierarchy. So sure, I've got a, an, an additional accountability over other people, but that doesn't make me any better or, or indeed any worse. And in the way in which I like to kind of like uh, flip it with the team really is to have this flat hierarchy. We're all equal. And uh, like I was saying earlier, at any point, the, the specialist, the expertise, the, the expert who is best to solve the problem can emerge and lead the team at that point. And then it's my job to just support and, and resource that person and make sure that we're on, on, on the target. We're not getting kind of mission drift at any kind of way, really. So um, if I do that really well, it's, it's super easy. I'm just, I'm just there guiding and resourcing and, and the, the people are just like blowing me away with, with kind of what they can do. So I think they're the similarities and that's the environment that I like to try and create now. Um, so it's, it's definitely allowing the expert tease within your team to, to blossom and flourish. Yeah, it's like, it's that trust, isn't it? I've been talking quite a lot about how you create trust in yourself and others because that that's a very well when we say that to people it, it seems dead easy doesn't it to, but you need the skill set and the experience to be able to do that Does yeah that it doesn't easy and um dependent you know some sports aren't like that um and s some are very hierarchical so you'll get people transitioning into your team who are a bit like oh i don't necessarily <laughs> believe this and it takes them a little while. So that transformational model, I feel, is underpinned by culture as well. And the, the culture that you create um, and establish that allows that to flourish. So if you're, if you're trying to speak tran transformational, but your culture is transactional, then clearly they're incongruent. Or if you throw people under a bus, you know, it's just like, it's never going to work. People are going to like um, regress and, and, not, and not be brave. So the culture that you create absolutely underpins and overarches any kind of like leadership model that, that yeah. you may or may not employ. I've just thought about something that you might be able to comment on. So nothing happens overnight. So what's been your experience about the time it takes to embed a way of leading or the culture or the environment to, to promote all this positive um, leadership? I think that depends, you know, that classic answer. <laughs> it depends on the person, how, how long they're into their career, um, the, the, the cultures and experiences that, that shape them. And some of them are absolutely ready for it straight away. They bite your arm off and, and really thrive. And that's what they've been wanting and searching for. Whereas others, it does take them a little bit of time to kind of go, okay, this, this guy is genuine and somebody has kind of messed up and he hasn't thrown them under the bus. He's kind of gone, well, I'm accountable for this. You're the expert, but still I'm accountable for it. I haven't resourced or supported you properly and I'll, I'll, I'll take all of that crap. So I think that it takes people a while to like to say to, to get that trust. And, and 
feel psychologically safe as you know the buzzwords that, that's out there right now but I think that that's that's true yeah do you know what you just made me laugh because I remember going through my ATI course adventure training instructors course for the guys who, who don't know the abbreviations and um we started to do soft skills, coaching, facilitating. And, and you just reminded me that we, we got quite quickly to the answer to everything was it's situational. <laughs> I think one, some of the instructors hated it because it was like, the, it is, it depends, doesn't it, on, on the environment, the people, the situation. Um, yeah, anyway, so um, we got five minutes. Um, this is fine by, I love it. <laughs> um, you mentioned and alluded to the um, managing people um, through success and through obviously also failure at the same time, um, whether we even want to call it, label it failure. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience of that individual people management. And, and, and I, know, I know it's situational, <laughs> um, but what are some of the things that you've had to really learn as a, as a leader of and um, personal people skills? Um, I think there's a bit, certainly within the competition arena of, um, of that high performance environment, obviously emotion, there's so much at stake. Um, so a, a, a job for me really is, is to be like the barometer of behavior and, and, and whatever's happening inside whether it's you know high or low i've externally i've just got to maintain this and then if a coach for example is just like going a bit high or an athlete i can kind of pull them down and just have a word and calm them or equally i can kind of lift them up so i think in terms of managing people in that environment that that's probably my job is to be that barometer and just keep them in that optimal level you know um and then when it when it has or hasn't kind of gone so well it's like being able to pull people into that as well so i could go running over to the person who's, who's been really successful and be like whoa um but that's obviously going to fly in the face of somebody else but i can walk over and have a really genuine that was amazing mm -hmm. and then turn around and you know just go up to the other person and just Sometimes you don't have to say anything, but it just could yeah. just be a hand on a shoulder, you know, and in that moment, that's it. That's all you need to do because um, the emotion is so raw for, for that person. But they know that you know. And I yeah. think you only get that as well when they know that you're genuine and you do have that empathetic connection. Yeah. Could you, I'm just thinking then, as, as the head coach, could you give us a little bit of um, understanding of how many people you are, coaching as the organization structure that you have in your specialization how many people is that and what is the diversity of people that you manage or lead uh so that, that's a good question there's probably 40 or 50 athletes wow. um both across the olympic and paralympic um discipline right now um there's there's british canoeing technical coaches and support staff again about another 20 of them and then there's about 10 or 15 possibly english institute of sport um staff that are embedded within the sport as well strength and conditioning psych psychologists nutritionists that kind of thing so whatever that is yeah amazing uh, a good diversity of um and quite a lot of people to sit and I, and I can understand the way that you've already spoken about how you approach that and um, through your experiences how that kind of works is there a, what what are you currently a couple of minutes left what are you currently looking to um that you're obviously on that lifelong journey of learning and developing what what are you working on and developing right now um there's, there's a bit for me what's next so there's, there's going to be a new new chapter new challenge after this uh, i'm not sure what that is just yet i'm just kind of finishing off a phd and there's some there's some work in there that's really helped certainly around the bits that we've we've talked just there so i guess one of the things we've just you just alluded to is the diversity of, of people of of trades of experts um across the piece in which i kind of manage really and i think the one key thing within that is is the more understanding I guess the, the task, the objective, um, the, the place in which we're all trying to get to. So the bit in which my PhD has helped me is around mental models. 
which are, are cognitive representations. So as an example, I don't know if you can see that, so it's a pen, right? But if I ask you to, I don't know, put some wings on that and an undercarriage, then what, what are we mentally representing? It'd be a plane, right? Yeah. So, so whether, you know, and I'd probably even orientate and start flying it around. So, so, what, so what, if, whether that's a 747 or a Cessna, it doesn't matter. We, we at least now know that, that we're talking about an aeroplane. And so if I call that an athlete, and, and as a strength and conditioning coach, our job is to make that athlete better. Then as a strength and conditioning coach, you can look at that and kind of go, oh, from my expertise, I understand now how I can fit into this, this problem and improve it. And so can the nutritionist and so can the technical coach. So what we can all do, we can look at that and we can perceive it from our own expertise, but understand how we can co collaborate and contribute to make that thing better from our own from our own perspective, hence the flat hierarchy, hence the expertise emerging, hence the culture to support that. So, yeah. very very short answer or not short answer, but I'm trying to give you the the, the short <laughs> version because I know we're out getting out of time. But that's the bit that I'm kind of like uh, working on now. So creating those mental models that that um, that we're all, that become shared. And understood between the team that then drives collaboration but once we start collaborating and we understand it from our perspective i know i can innovate that and make that mm. better so drives innovation clarity um and you know what whatever domain i'd be in my end products my airplane my person would, would be improved yeah do you know what? that that's brilliant because so many times we've had guests on the podcast that people have commented how amazing it to, to hear what journey they are still on and and we've had people that you would say were top of the tree and they're still learning and, that, and that's one of the things we really want to put across that there's no end goal there's no end to this journey it, it's keep going and it's been quite um, eye-opening for some of the people listening to some of the guests that are like wow I can't believe how much learning and developing they're still doing at the position they are in um because your position head coach you'd think some people would perceive that you you knew a, knew everything um, and that's far from the truth <laughs> well yeah and I, I don't need to know everything but i need yeah. somebody who knows that that potential area so if i surround myself by them by by default i know everything yeah <laughs> right exactly. but i know nothing but I, I know how to leverage that expertise yeah. and and yeah i've just said you know i'm going to i'm going to seek a new challenge after after games um i don't know what that is but I'm kind of like, no, I know that there's some like amazing opportunities that will open up as well because of the PhD, because of this. And yeah, I'm really excited to see where that goes. Amazing. So, Scotty, we are out of time, a little bit over, but it was worth it. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. So, guys, if you enjoyed that, make sure you hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. I've got all Scotty's um, links and information below. If you're listening to us on your podcast provider, make sure you follow. We have guests coming out every Wednesday at 6 a.m. Um, to add value to your own leadership journey. And please, if you can, pass it forward and, and let us know what you got from each of these episodes. So, Scotty, thank you so much. Thank you. Our, if this is coming out on the 1st of September, our um, competition date's the 2nd, 3rd and 4th. So uh, check us out. I think we're on uh, channel, channel 4 for the Paralympics and uh, it's the Paracanoe event. So cheer us on. Fantastic. Yeah, perfect timing. Perfect yeah. timing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Scott, yeah, enjoy the rest of your um, jet lag recovery. And um, I look forward to um, seeing how you're getting on tomorrow. <laughs> Take care, guys. See you next week. Bye.